Five images taken by the Smart One spacecraft were selected. Five images out of 113 which had captured a location on the moon suspected to be a peak of eternal light. A three-dimensional model of the lunar surface was reconstructed from these five images. The method used is called shape from shading. It works similarly to the human eye utilizing the shade variation of a surface to estimate its shape. The approach applied here is quite novel. It simultaneously uses several images taken under diverse illuminations. A hundred thousand computational iterations were needed to obtain the final model. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Commander Grieger and the crew, I would like to welcome you on board Sparrow, our virtual lunar shuttle. My name is Rebecca and I will be your guide on this sightseeing flight over the famous peak of eternal light near the lunar south pole. Our trip will take just seven and a half minutes. Under normal conditions, our main engine thrust should not deviate more than 50% from lunar gravity. However, attitude maneuvers may be required at any time. Therefore, we recommend that you remain seated with your seatbelt securely fastened at all times. Currently, we are flying over the famous Shackleton Crater, which has a diameter of about 20 kilometers. At the moment, the interior of the crater is in shadow. At this point, we are crossing the rim of the Shackleton Crater and leaving. Later on, we'll get a better view of this crater from a distance. We are now decreasing altitude to fly through the valley ahead that separates two ridges. The ridge on the left runs from the rim of Shackleton Crater to the peak of eternal light. As this is a virtual tour, we are able to provide you with some rather extraordinary services. One of them is that the elevations you can see have been exaggerated five times to enhance your view. However, there are also some limitations. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that what you are seeing is based on images taken by the Smart One spacecraft from an altitude of about 600 kilometers above the surface of the moon. This means that when we are flying close to the surface, the limited resolution of the terrain model becomes visible. We are now turning our lunar shuttle Sparrow to the left to give you a view of the peak of eternal light. As you may know, the flight behavior of a lunar shuttle resembles that of a helicopter. Therefore, we can easily move sideways. We are now moving into a wide circle around the peak of eternal light. At the same time, we are increasing in altitude to get into position for a nice panoramic view. If you are using a stereo vision system, you'll be experiencing the well-known miniaturization effect where the entire terrain model appears to be only a few meters in diameter, whereas in reality, it is 20 kilometers across. On this virtual tour, we have scaled it down for your convenience, as human stereo vision works only for short distances. With virtual flight, we are also able to offer you another unique service, time travel. We will now fast forward to a time later in the lunar day. At this time, the illumination of the peak of eternal light is more favorable for our current viewing position. Just to remind you, the lunar day takes 29 and a half Earth days. In this time, the sun appears to circle once around the peak of eternal light. Currently, it is summer in the southern lunar hemisphere. Therefore, viewed from close to the South Pole, the sun stays slightly above the horizon throughout the lunar day and night. So, as we move to later in the lunar day, we see that the peak of eternal light, which is to the left, is still illuminated, while part of the ridge joining the peak to the rim of the Shackleton Crater is now in shadow. We'll now go forward in time, close to lunar midnight. Because it is summer, the peak and some other terrain is still illuminated. In the deepest lunar winter, even the peak falls into shadow for a fraction of the lunar night, so the peak is not really eternally lit. However, it is the one area in the south polar region 
that comes closest to it. For now, let's return to a time of more favorable illumination. The peak is constantly illuminated for almost the entire lunar year, and that would make it a favorable site for landing and for a permanent lunar base. Without sunlight and the possibility to generate electricity from it, both humans and machine would find it hard to survive the long and cold lunar night. We are now looking straight at the edge of the terrain model. The edge cuts right through Shackleton Crater. Direct sunlight never reaches the floor of Shackleton. However, it is not completely dark down there. The illuminated inner crater wall is as bright as the sunlit moon in Earth's night sky. This provides indirect lighting sufficient for the human eye. Permanently shaded crater floors could be cold traps for water vapor brought to the moon by cometary impacts. The water could accumulate as ice there, but nowhere else. In direct sunlight, it would quickly evaporate. Shackleton would be an interesting place to explore by an expedition team from the peak of eternal light. We're now flying along the 10 kilometer long ridge from Shackleton towards the peak of eternal light, along the path that such an expedition would have to travel. Besides the large Shackleton crater, many of the other craters we see also have permanently shaded floors, which would be interesting places to explore. We are now about to fly closely over the peak of eternal light, the one place on the moon which has the best chance to someday host a permanent lunar base. Please hold on now while we perform a tight right turn. We are now turning our lunar shuttle by 180 degrees to look back as we fly away from the peak of eternal light. This peak rarely gets completely dark, but this whole area certainly never gets really bright. These extreme high latitude landscapes of the moon are always flooded with shadows. Let's take a last leap forward in time to midnight. In the background to the left, we can just see the sunlight grazing the rim of Shackleton, while the peak of eternal light still escapes the shadow cast by the crater wall. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now coming to the end of our virtual trip around the peak of eternal light. On behalf of Commander Grieger and the crew, I would like to thank you for flying with us. We hope you enjoyed the tour on board our virtual lunar shuttle Sparrow, Goodbye, and we look forward to welcoming you back on the moon soon.